Welcome back, Hypno Buddies, for more Chaos Head Noah. So we are now in Chapter 2. And uh, we're starting to investigate some of the things that have brought to our attention via Yua. So we're starting to look into, okay, well, what's the explanation for these uh, comments and these timestamps that are not lining up? Are we sleepwalking? Is it something else going on? Not too sure, but we're starting to look into it. I'm actually recording this episode more or less right after the last one, so I don't have a whole lot more to add at the moment other than just... The reason I'm doing that is because I've noticed there's some indiscrepancies with my audio that I keep needing to correct in post. And I'm trying to nail down where those indiscrepancies are coming from. So we're doing a little experiment with a change in setup from the last session and this session. So I'm trying to th keep things consistent using the first episode as a baseline. But if things get a little louder or get a little quieter between sessions, well, that might be why, depending on just maybe I'm a quarter inch further away from my microphone during one recording than during another. Who the hell knows? But anyway, we're going to get back into it. And when we last left off, we were uh, apparently in some sort of orientation with uh, someone named Ban Yasuji. It was, in fact, the first time in three days that Ban Yasuji had set foot in the Shibuya police station conference room. Why has he done this? I don't know. This is our first time with this character's name being in this place. So let's find out. The investigation meeting for the Mayuri, Mayura Macho crucifixion homicide case had already begun. Ah, so we have a, an officer actually in charge of the investigation and not just Yua, who God knows why she's doing it. And Ban was greeted with universal gazes of displeasure for his tardiness. Tisk tisk. Ban forced a polite smile before bending down to sit. He supposed that it was not quite the right time to reveal that he had been cooped up in the bathroom with diarrhea. TMI. The Marai, the Maruya, I'm going to get this right here, the Maruya, Maruya Macho, the Maruya Macho crucifixion homicide case had been assigned to the Shibuya police station, which makes sense given that's where it was, on the morning after the incident. As they were lacking in manpower due to the Cornelius Tower mass suicide case and the Shibuya station undergrad and fetus homicide case, even the third-rate assistant inspector, Ban, whom the Metropolitan Police Department's Investigation Division were practically begging to retire, had been called in by the main office. Moreover, as all the incidents had occurred within the Shibuya Police Station's jurisdiction, it was an unusual situation in which a single jurisdictional station was utilizing three special investigation teams. These boys are busy. Because of this, operations were made quite difficult, with the three investigation teams having access to only one large conference room that they had to alternate between. The mass media was hailing it as one large case known as New Gen, and there were rumors that the police would combine the three investigation teams in order to make a New Gen investigation division, thus solving the issue of manpower. But all the detectives found this prospect completely asinine, regarding it as nothing more than an absolute joke. <laughs> Assistant Inspector, your report. I assume they mean Ban. Ban's superior, Inspector Matsunaga, who was in charge of the investigation team, called out to Ban with a piercing gaze. But Ban did not notice this. He simply continued to cool himself down with a handheld fan as he took a moment to recuperate. Man, that diary took a lot out of me. Oh, God, my asshole. Assistant Inspector, Assistant Inspector Ban, are you listening to me? Oh! Oh, it's this guy. I thought this was banned for a moment. This this is the guy we saw over Yua's shoulder. Uh, not last episode, but the episode before? Yeah. So there was this guy, a police officer. <laughs> yeah, young uh, Phoenix right here. So he wasn't a teacher. Was he just an inspector who was investigating and passing by? I recognize this bastard. The boss is calling you. B ban son, he's waiting for your report. Hello. The whispers of Ban's partner, a rookie named Suwa, finally got him to realize he was being called. Okay, so this is Suwa. Oh my God, it's Gumshoe. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, Suwa will give the report. <laughs> this is literally young Phoenix Wright and young Gumshoe. Look at these two. Look at these two motherfuckers. Like right down to the color scheme. All he needs is the band-aid. 
uh, this. <laughs> I mean, I, I say this is gumshoe, but it almost looks like anime Columbo here. It's like, oh, just, just one more thing. Just one more thing, sir. <laughs> uh, do I dare give this guy a Columbo voice? Do I have a Columbo voice to give him? The answer is no. Perhaps we'll find one. Oh, I like this guy already. Okay, so this is Ban. This is, uh, this is Columbo gumshoe. Oh, uh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, Sue, I'll give the report. I'll try to find... I'll try to find something appropriate for this guy here. This is totally Columbo Gumshoe. You, you, you want me to do it? Yeah, Phoenix, get on it. I did tell you to if I wasn't here, so them's the breaks, but you're here. Ah, hurry it up. <laughs> and I'm off to, off to the bathroom again. Suicide as superior as his superior jabbed him in the elbow, then stood up straight and tall. The analysis of the security camera footage from near the crime scene has finally finished up, uh, concluded. Uh, the recording shows a suspicious individual present at the scene at around the time the crime was likely committed, which will be our boy. That'll be Takumi. Murmurs echo through the conference room. The relaxed atmosphere from before had been turned on its head. It's going to be our pro tag, ain't it? The other detectives began to take frantic notes in order to not miss a single word of Sua's report. Considering the situation, it was no surprise they were so frantic about it. After all, three horrific cases had occurred within their jurisdiction in the span of a single month, only one of which was not ruled a homicide as of yet, and their strong determination to find the culprit, even in the face of their reputations, was only natural. I will show the footage on the projector. Takumi. As per the instructions Ban had given him in advance, Sua had the projector display the footage on the projector screen. Also interesting if this footage came out before we saw Sua before, because Sua probably saw uh, Takumi and said, oh, it's that kid. He probably recognized him from the footage we're about to see, if he's on it. The projector shone an image of the confined, filthy back alley of Maria, Maria Macho. I believe we had this word in the second episode. It looks familiar. Maria, Maruya, Maruya Macho. It was night, and there were very few streetlights present, so virtually nothing was visible. This is a security camera from a coin-operated parking lot located about 50 meters from the scene of the crime. The parking lot was only big enough to fit two vehicles. It was a tiny plot of land interposed between two buildings, and it was constructed without any real care as well. The scene of the crime was not visible in the footage. Not even the path leading to it could be seen. All it displayed was the road that was one farther away from the crime scene. The video had no sound. The time the video had been recorded was graciously displayed on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, 9.34 p.m. God, at least we know the time. According to the testimony of residents near the crime scene, the sound of nails being hammered could be heard beginning from just past 9 p.m. and ending around 9.30 p.m., which I imagine you already know. This footage is from 9.34 p.m., which means it was recorded right after the time of the crime. The suspicious individual is shown for around six seconds, starting from 9.34.53. During that time, they run from the back of the road in front of the parking lot to the front. Yep. Well, we know who that is now, don't we? I'll give you a hint. It ain't the girl. Immediately following Sue's explanation, a silhouette appeared on the footage. They seemed to be in a great hurry and ran from the front of the screen to the, or that ran from the back of the screen to the front. As the resolution was quite poor, not even their gender could be ascertained at a glance, but Ban had already gotten the crime laboratory to analyze that very point. The results of the forensic analysis show that the individual is a man with an age estimated between late teens and early 20s. Uh, and early 20s. <laughs> this guy seems to have a habit of uh, shortening his words and then correcting himself. It was impossible to discern their facial features. Their clothing, however, is fairly distinct, and it was discovered to be the male uniform of Sume Private Academy, located in Shoto. Also, if you would direct your attention toward the right hand, the image enlarged on the right hand of the suspicious individual. It appeared to be grasping something. Oh, the cross? Yeah, 
I can't look at this guy and not think about Colombo. It's good to see that uh, Peter Falk has uh, managed to get some work overseas. Uh, upon upon playing the footage back in slow motion, uh, we, we discovered that when he waves his arms while running, the light reflects from the object he's holding, thanks to the light present in the parking lot. Now, at the good part, Ben took over Sue's explanation. It's like, you've done good, kid. Sit down. Judging by the shape, there's a possibility that it's the same kind of cross-shaped stake used in the crime. The detectives continued to murmur noisily. The crucifixion culprit may be a high schooler. The proposition was fairly shocking to them. After all, it meant that the new generation madness moniker that the mass media had been pushing could actually become a reality. So the closest person we have to a suspect would be this boy, correct? Well, we're screwed. Uh, that would be the case, indeed. Ben stroked the stubble on his jaw, or Ban stroked the stubble on his jaw. It was a habit of his. Whenever he felt one step closer to cornering a culprit, he would always reach for that satisfying scraping sensation. Uh, that is all. Thanks, Sua. Sua took a deep breath and sat down. You're the worst, sir. I can't believe you robbed me of the best part like that. Ignoring Sua's grumbling, Ban once again buried the image of the high school boy, burned the image of the high school boy into his mind. Uh, so you've finally shown yourself. Now, I just gotta grab onto you and never let go. If he talks to Takumi and ever says, oh, uh, uh, just one more thing, that's going to be hilarious. Oh, there's one more thing, sir. One more thing. Uh, one other thing. Oh, just one more thing, sir. Oh, one more thing, sir. Uh, one more thing. And if he doesn't, I'm going to do it for him. What's with this? Machine settings. Why are we going in here? Oh, we're checking our internet cache. We're looking at our images from the very end of the last episode. Sure enough, the image Shogun had sent was in my cache folder. 168491.jpg was its name. He sent us more than that, and it looks like we downloaded them all. Damn. Obviously, a part of me was still hesitant to even look at it. I mean, it was a pretty fucking nasty image. Grotesque as all hell, too. I was sure just looking at it would throw me back to the scene of the crucifixion where that violent scene had taken place right in front of me. Why would it be crook a fiction? I want to know why it's crucifixion because it's spelled crucifixion. I'm going to keep calling it crucifixion. I don't know why it's called crucifixion. But even then, I needed to expose you as flawed logic and therefore guarantee my own safety and innocence. Thankfully, since Saratan was there for me, I could handle a little bit of gore. Thanks, waifu. Mustering all the courage I had, I double-clicked the file. Here we go, guys. Okay. Gah. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole like what's this thing in the lower left? Are we gonna are we gonna zoom and enhance and it's gonna be us? God, it was so gory. But compared to the crucifixion I'd seen I'd seen in person, it wasn't quite as bad. Telling myself that the image had to be fake, I was just barely able to stomach it. When I'd first received the image, I'd closed it immediately after looking at it once. I hadn't inspected it thoroughly. This time, holding back the urge to vomit, I decided to examine the image in excruciating detail. I didn't know much about how to tell whether a picture was fake or not, but taking a look at the shadows, seeing if there was anything off about the surrounding area, and other stuff like that should probably be enough. The only possibility I had in mind was that the photo had been taken in advance, and the crucifixion corpse had been then been put there on top of it using the CGI. And then the day after Shogun had sent the image to me, they had executed the crime exactly as they'd edited the image. Thanks to the poor resolution and how dark the image was, I could only really see the stakes, leaving the identity of the victim unclear. Light was only hitting the area surrounding the corpse, yet something about the image was just begging for me to look at the crucifixion itself. I felt like that was the intent of the person who'd made it. I mean, come on! Focusing that much light around the corpse was kind of overkill, don't you think? Well, it wasn't like I'd been paying close attention to the actual crime scene, so I couldn't really jump to conclusions. In the picture, the demon girl wasn't standing in front of the crucified corpse. 
What is that in the lower left? Yeah, but when I opened my eyes wide and looked even closer, I noticed a silhouette in a dark spot on the left side of the image. Is that going to be us? I'd almost completely missed it. Due to the low res of the image, the shadow the figure stood in blended perfectly into the surrounding area. You could easily miss it if you weren't paying close attention. Obviously, the image was fake, but what if the person who'd taken the photo had accidentally let themselves in it? If they had, it was possible they'd forgotten to edit themselves out when they'd tampered with the image. It looked like they were wearing a Suma uniform. In that case, it had to be the demon girl. Definitely not us. She had been wearing one at the time of the crime, after all. But when I took a closer look, I noticed that the figure's hair was actually pretty short. The demon girl had long hair, like Yua. I can't see squat in there, so yeah, you need to open up Photoshop, buddy. All right, then. Time for some computer magic. I needed the details here. I opened up some image processing software and dragged the image in. Then with a big gulp, I selected the levels option in the adjustment menu. Hey, good man. That's exactly the option you're supposed to use. And brightened the once darkened corners of the image. Oh, dear. Huh? Yep. That's a bad. That's not what Levels does. I think that's a little bit more than what it does. But, um, yeah. Yep, Japanese Columbo's got your ass. What the hell? Uh, huh? What? I don't... That's... Pictured on the screen. Pictured on the screen was unmistakably me. How was it me? It didn't make any sense. I'd never even been there before September 29th. It was fake. It had to be fake. I couldn't find any bit of proof that it was, but it absolutely had to be. Nothing made sense otherwise. I mean, Shogun had sent the image on the 28th. And the crucifixion murder case had occurred on the 29th. Also, when this guy was running, the girl was there. So it's certainly not a completely undoctored image of the event. If the image of what had happened on the 29th, then this would mean it was a picture taken from the future. Do you have precognitive powers? And you apparently sent yourself that picture. Fuck you! There's no way I have powers. I kicked the plastic bottle at my feet and closed the paint program. I checked the file's properties to see when it was made, and then I lost all words. The timestamp was the 28th. But that was the least of my worries now. In the comment section of the properties menu, uh-oh, was a single, inconspicuous sentence. A sentence my eyes couldn't look away from. Whose eyes are those eyes? You bastard. You son of a bitch. I slammed my hands on the keyboard before shoving it to the edge of my desk. I clutched my head. Is this our way of telling ourselves that this is us? Because Shogun is apparently us, and of course we would know our stupid little catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Save me, Sarah. Sarah's just looking like, 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 nah, fuck this. You're on your own. <laughs> I ain't got shit. <laughs> I can barely hold back my tears. What the hell had I done to deserve a whole week of nothing but more and more insane bullshit? Why was I the only one that had to deal with this shit? Dude, Columbo's already coming up to your shipping crate. Hang on a second. If they had somehow managed to get a photo of me, and then they'd edit it onto the image of the crime scene, that would either mean Shogun had taken a photo of me without my consent, or that he had somehow obtained my photo from another source. Where is anyone going to get a photo of you running? That is not something that you do. And considering how he'd suddenly entered the chat room and started talking to me right after Grimm had left, he had likely been aiming for me and me alone from the very start. Interesting theories. Shogun may very well have discovered my real identity. Well, that was a given. If that was true, then Shogun, the demon girl, anyone could raid my base at any moment, and then I'd be abducted. 
I felt a chill on the nape of my neck. It was the gaze again. There was something there. Watching me. It's us, guys. Don't look at me. I don't think they're going to listen. Did you really think I'd turn around? I knew the rules of the game better than anyone. The it'll take more than that to make me turn around game. Will you turn around for Japanese Colombo? Fear sent goosebumps all over my body, and I felt a sudden urge to check that the door was locked. But instead of doing that, I just continued to stare at my monitor as I was way too stubborn to let myself lose. Surely you locked it. If he didn't, we're going to turn around to get... We're, gonna, we're turning around to getting a jump scare at some point in this game. There's no way we're not. Unable to calm down, I opened up my default word processor and wrote down everything on my mind. Well, that's not going to come back to bite you later. Oh yeah, didn't we do something like this earlier? Demon Girl has precognitive powers. Shogun is the Demon Girl's underling. Yua is Shogun's underling. And we are completely innocent. This has nothing to do with us. F you all. As I stared fearfully at the word demon, I began to wonder if the girl at the crime scene was actually a real demon. I mean, come on. She couldn't be human by any means. If she was a demon, she might actually be able to see the future. And if she could see the future, projecting a scene from the future onto a picture via psychic photography would be child's play. It would line up perfectly with how she'd somehow managed to carry out the gruesome crucifixion all on her own. She'd then gotten her underling Shogun to send the image to me, a person who she knew would end up accidentally witnessing the crime scene. How did she do that from your desk in the cafe while you were there? I didn't know why she'd done that. Maybe it was a threat. This'll be you next if you tell anyone what you saw. Or maybe it was a death sentence. You're next. And if that really was what it meant, then... Oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> they could come and murder me at any moment. This guy's going to get set up a live stream camera outside his shipping crate. Oh, we are somewhere else. That is an interesting poster. Oh, this is Yua. All right. Kusunoki Yua faced the PC in her room, her profile gravely serious. She swiftly read through the information displayed on the monitor. Who is she working with? Is this like Ban's daughter or something? Before long, Hiwa let out a small sigh and released her hand from the mouse, or maybe granddaughter, considering his age, glancing at a piece of paper sitting within reach of her. Yeah, this. Hmm. It was the very same paper she had put before Nijijo, Nishijo Takami the day before. The printout of the chat log between Neidhart and Shogun. That's a lot of images. I'm curious about what the rest of them look like, because we've only seen one of them. Nishijoku. Nishijokun. Yua muttered a single name. The view of Takami sitting alone on that Shoto Park bench appeared in her mind, before she quickly shook her head to drown it out. Suddenly, she looked behind herself in surprise. Uh-oh. Just now, it felt like someone was watching me. Her gaze stopped upon a large stuffed Jero froggy enshrined on her bed. Man, she loves those things. Wondering if it had just been her imagination, she tilted her head in puzzlement. Then she slowly rose to her feet, walked over to her bed, and fell onto it headfirst. The sheets smelled of the sun. It seemed that her mother had kindly dried the futon earlier today. You have buried her face in that relieving scent, her gaze wandering around vacantly. Her room was very neat and orderly, placing her meticulous personality on full display, complete opposite of our boy. This especially applied to her large bookshelf, which was rather incongruous for a room sized at about 13 square meters. It was packed tight with countless books, leaving hardly any gaps. However, charmingly, the lower half consisted of nothing but complex academic books, computer-related books, and other similar materials, contrasting greatly with the upper half, which was filled with shoujo manga and anime DVDs, of course. With another sigh, Yua turned her body face up and stared at the ceiling. D.I.D. D.I.D. Oh, Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, this is what your uh, worried Takami has. We're uh, no longer on the sleepwalking theory. 
She muttered the name of the mental illness she had just been researching. Because of our boy? An explanation related to it was still displayed on the monitor. It must be so hard. Does she have reason to believe our boy has that? I mean, that would explain a thing or three. Yua hugged the stuffed garo froggy by her pillow tightly as she thought about Takami. But I... However, her expression soon vanished, replaced only by the gritting of her teeth. She's worried an alternate personality is uh, committing these crimes. Uh-oh, heartbeats. Clicky click. <laughs> We're still just having a panic attack here. It hurt to breathe. All I was doing was looking things up on my PC, yet it hurt to breathe. I could feel my heart pounding harder than it ever had before. And of course, the feeling that something was watching me would not go away. I was still just barely keeping myself from turning around, but I knew I couldn't do it for much longer. <laughs> Japanese Columbo's just been standing behind him for the last 45 minutes waiting for him to turn around. What the fuck is wrong with you? Show yourself, asshole. I crowd, cried out angrily at whatever it was. Surely it wasn't the demon girl, right? Oh, God, what if it was? She could be using second sight or clairvoyance or some other demonic power to spy on me. <laughs> Who needs to spy on you? Everyone knows what you do for 80% of your day. The chills on the back of my neck were gradually growing stronger to the point where they were getting slightly painful, like jolts of electricity coursing through my body. I was covered from head to toe in sweat. The front of my t-shirt was completely soaked. Turn around already. Unable to take it anymore, I whipped around in my chair as forcefully as I could. And yet, all I saw was my room, in the same condition as always. I didn't see a single thing that shouldn't have been there. Japanese Columbo is actually sitting on his desk now. <laughs> How are you not there? Who are you? Run out and open the door. With a yell that was closer to a shriek than anything, I burst up from my chair and went to make sure the door was locked. And much to my relief, it was. I wiped away the sweat on my forehead with my sleeve. That was an interesting fish eye. Returning to my PC, I focused on the monitor once more. It was still displaying what I had been researching earlier. Precognition, of course. When I was a kid, I truly believed that precognition existed, that psychics existed. I'm glad we're following up on that. And if I was being completely honest, I still did, to a degree. That was why my first thought had been that the image from Shogun and the Demon Girl was a precognitive photograph, a thought which only drove me to look into it all the more. What if, maybe, just maybe, there were tons of psychics all over the world and I just didn't know? Back when I was a kid... When that bus accident happened, I'd managed something that had been pretty close to precognition. For that reason, I couldn't completely rule out its existence. But no matter how much I searched, all I could find was extremely dubious articles about the occult, voodoo shit, or whatever else. There was absolutely nothing that proved scientifically whether it existed or not. There has to be at least something... Growing increasingly frustrated, I violently tapped away at the keyboard. I couldn't deal with how anxious not having a concrete answer made me. Was the world really telling me to give up, to wait here, trembling in fear of demons that might or might not come? I suppose if we were going to try to prove this in some way or another, we would maybe try to actually do it, kind of like how he predicted certain things when he was a kid and got 100% correct. I couldn't stay sane like that. Of course, I would have vastly vastly preferred to learn that precognition didn't exist, but regardless of what the truth was, I needed to know it. Badly. Pretty much out of options, I decided to take a look at At Channel's occult board. The place was typically home to nothing but total BS noise, lies and misinformation mainly, but it actually had some pretty mind-blowing and even useful information scattered on it sometimes. Biting back how frantic I was, I opened up at channel. 
Then I clicked on the occult board and gave precognition a search. And when I did... Huh? huh? My search pulled up a surprising number of threads, about 30 of them. Oh, there's FES. FES is that uh, girl we saw in, like, what, episode three? Two? Was precognition a hot topic on that channel at the moment? I keep joking about running into uh, Gohan Kamehameha, but uh, if this is a prequel to Steins Gate, then that's probably not going to be the case. With a gulp, I checked the title of the thread titles one by one. Phantasm? F-E-S. Phantasm? F-E-S? Yeah, F-E-S is that girl. Most of the threads contained those two key words. In addition, new-gen discussion had also wormed its way in, with lots of unsettling terms like prophetic lyrics and murderer being used. Having never heard of Phantasm before, I went to Google them. Apparently they were a Shibuya-based four-piece gothic punk band that had been doing live concerts recently. They were so popular, in fact, that they were completely dominating the indie music scene with a female vocalist known only as F.E.S. Well, we did see F.E.S. singing. Anyway, to check whether it was related to precognition or not, I clicked on the thread at the top titled Precognition and Prophecies, Phantasm General, New Gen 43, and gave the contents a brief skim. Okay. I got a tip for something. I didn't even see what it was. Deaf can feel the new gen connection. <laughs> ah, settle down, you fetishists. Jeez. Yeah, take that to the BDSM thread. And there's some of the lyrics. There was a tip again that I completely missed. Okay, don't leak the lyrics. Those lyrics, depending on how you interpreted them, they could be seen as referring to the, the group dive. Um, O oh, servant revealed by the light on the moonlit night. Connect the phantasmal paths which lead to this place. Little do they know their screams will soon turn to silence and repose shall fall upon us as we link hand in hand within the wind. Yeah, you could... Uh, you could make that stretch. And yet those lyrics have been released two months ago, which meant they hadn't been written after the crucifixion or the group or the group dive. Is this precognition? Could it just be a coincidence or could Phantasm be yet another one of the demon girl's underlings? I read the thread in more details, only to find out that each of the three new-gen incidents had all been prophesized by Phantasm ly Phantasm's lyrics. However, the lyrics for the songs that supposedly prophesied the man-child and crucifixion incidences had not been posted on that channel. Apparently uploading them online was viewed as a taboo of sorts. Their philosophy seemed to be, if you really want to know, just go to the concerts and buy an album yourself. I suspect we shall be doing that. Regardless, there were a great number of people online trying to predict the next new-gen case based on the songs Phantasm had performed thus far. And apparently... Ever since New Gen kicked off, Phantasm's albums have been completely selling out. They have been so successful, in fact, that even the mainstream media had picked up on it. Gothic band boasting cult following rise among the youth of Shibuya. New stories like that were popping up all over the place. The one writing the lyrics was the head singer, F.E.S. Nobody knew her real name. What if F.E.S. was actually the demon girl? If she was, it would explain how she'd managed to prophesize the incidents literally months before they'd occurred. The demon girl was the culprit, after all. I tried doing an image search, but I couldn't find any good photos of her face. All the photos were taken by phones during her concerts, and they were so blurry that I couldn't even begin to make out her face. <laughs> ah, shit. I don't believe she was wearing a school uniform. I don't believe so. I wiped my sweat-drenched forehead with the hem of my shirt. I was frustrated, I was scared, I couldn't believe anything. I didn't even want to see anything. Several emotions were swirling within me, suffocating me. 
My breathing hadn't come close to stabilizing this entire time. But even so, I knew one thing for certain. I needed to see FES's face. With trembling fingers, I typed in Phantasm's name and clicked on their official website. I mean, we need to know if it's the uh, demon girl, right? The site was mostly black and decorated only by text of a uniform, deep crimson color. It was unrelenting in its simplicity, and yet it felt so eerily, incredibly eerie and strange. There was barely anything on the site at all. Just basic information on their concerts and discography. There wasn't even a single image. There was no profiles on the band members either, nor anything in their song lyrics. <sighs> well, if they were the culprit, they wouldn't want their face on the internet anyway. That makes sense. Talk about Thorough. I took a look at their performance schedule and saw that they typically performed about every other week. Their next concert was the day after tomorrow. If I went to it, I'd be able to check whether FES was the demon girl or not. But even if I did find out they were one and the same, what would I even do? Report FES to the police? Cry and beg for her to leave me alone? Bring a crucifix and attempt a mock exorcism? Not that one. That Not that option. Yeah, none of those were going to happen. I was up against a demon. There was no way in hell an otaku freak like me could come out on top. Problem is, if I didn't, I'd die. She'd transform my corpse into her newest art piece, and I'd be posted on the All Things New Gen site as yet another case. So, no, yeah. Fuck that. But if I didn't do something, I'd never find out what that picture of me that Shogun had sent really meant. And on the off chance that F.E.S. wasn't connected to the Demon Girl, maybe I could ask her to help me fight against whoever the Demon Girl actually was. Uh, like that's ever going to happen. I'd never survive going to a concert. Uh, such a challenge. I'd never been to one in my life. That sort of thing was infinitely beyond my comfort zone. You stand there, you listen to music. It's not that hard. Just stand against the wall, it's fine. Not to mention concert halls were cramped and dark and noisy and crowded. Just imagining a place like that made me want to hurl. I was at my wit's end. I had no idea what to do. The chills on the back of my neck still hadn't gone away, and the painful prickling sensation suddenly turned into a burning one. I looked behind me again, but, well, like always, nobody was there. Ugh, just stop, please. Look, I'm sorry, I have to look at you. I'm playing the game. It's for my YouTube channel, all right? Just, just deal with it. I closed my eyes tightly, focusing on nothing other than waiting for the gaze to disappear. I'm not going anywhere. I've still got a good 20 minutes to go, buddy. Strap in. I didn't want to go through this torment for the rest of my life. That's only another 20 minutes, dude. You're good. For all I knew, the gaze would straight up kill me someday. God, don't I wish I could sometimes. Uh, think, Takumi. What can I do? Think. You're going to that concert for sure, aren't you? Oh, another interlude. Are we going to school? Nope, we're somewhere else. Who are we now? Hiding in the shadow of a telephone pole, I looked at the gigantic concert hall from afar. Are we still talking to me? I would say we probably are. After agonizing over it all day yesterday, I'd somehow managed to nut up <laughs> and did what needed to be done. You bought a ticket? So here I was, Gigantis. It was located on a narrow street in Shibuya beneath the elevated railway tracks. It had a very distinct red brick exterior. The exterior was lit up too, giving off an old-fashioned austere vibe that made it feel as if I'd been transported back in time to the 50s or something. To think that a spot like this was in Shibuya of all places, I'd have no idea it even existed until yesterday. It was only five minutes from the station on foot, yet there weren't very many people at all. Every once in a while, a train would pass over the elevated tracks with a tremendous roar, and the telephone pole I was hiding behind would tremble slightly, but that was about it. Just a moment ago, there had been a bunch of what appeared to be Phantasm fans in front of Gigantus. Some of them were wearing outfits, so out there I'd almost mistaken them for cosplayers. However, what surprised me well, the most was that there honestly weren't that many of them. Despite being such a huge topic online, there must have been no more than a hundred people there. Regardless, they were all inside the building now. The concert had already begun, but since none of the audio managed to bleed outside, it certainly didn't feel like it. <laughs> Poor boy's having an anxiety attack again. My heart palpitations had gone away after I'd fallen asleep yesterday. Okay, so he does sleep. <laughs> he sleeps, confirmed. 
but they'd come back with a vengeance the second I'd arrived in front of the venue. It had been so hard to breathe, I almost thought I was dealing with some kind of heart failure. But really, I knew exactly why it was so bad. This place was filled with a thick, impenetrable darkness. The demon girl and her underlings could be looking around any corner. Knowing that, I'd been on the lookout for anyone that might attack me ever since I got here. The sheer anxiety and paranoia was comparable to what it felt like going through the, <laughs> the Wands Volcano dungeon in ESO. God, I hate that dungeon. The third boss is such bullshit. Mobs in the Wands Volcano dungeon were OP as hell, and it was surrounded by the kind of lava that insta-killed you if you so much as clipped it with your pinky toe. That shit could have been play-tested. The amount of times I died there, holy hell. I wiped the sweat off my forehead with a hand towel and gulped down a gob of saliva. Right as I did, the door at the top of the stairs opened, and the furious beating of drums reverberated from inside Gigantus for a few seconds. A single guy exited from the door. He jogged nimbly down the stairs and then toward me. Is it going to be Sua? Is it going to be Sua or is it going to be uh, from the guy from our class? Misomi or whatever his name is. It is. <laughs> it is him. What are you doing here, prick? Sup, talk. Oh, it's Mizumi. Oh, he had invited Mizumi to go to the venue with him, and I didn't know his phone number. I've been forced to go to school today just to ask him to go. If he hadn't come with me, I probably wouldn't have even made it this far. And even if I'd somehow forced myself to go into the building alone, if the demon girl was there, it would be a certified game over. So is he going to describe the uh, singer to us so we'll know if it was uh, who we think it is or not? So I had Mizumi operate as a scout. I did feel bad about throwing him into the line of fire, so I obviously haven't told him about that part. The only part, the only people I could rely on were him and Nanami, so I picked the less annoying of the two, Mizumi-kun. Nanami is not walking in there. She's not old enough. I even covered his ticket costs, so in a sense you could say I hired him for a thousand yen. Right, here's your CD. I grabbed one for myself, too. Mizumi-kun handed me a Phantasm album. They were being sold for an outrageous premium in online auctions, but I'd heard on Ad Channel that they were also available at their concerts, so I asked Mizumi-kun to buy one for me. And now that I had one, I'd achieved half the goals I'd set out for myself. As for the remaining half... Yeah, honestly, though, they're way better than I thought they'd be. Phantasm, I mean. Mizumi-kun had been acting pretty excited ever since he'd exited the venue. I never really listened to him before, because, you know me, I'm no sheep. Besides, I figured they were overhyped, but just that little bit I heard just now was enough to make me a real fan. <laughs> Again, do people have certain powers of persuasion or influence in this uh, universe here? Is it just precognition, or are different people going to be able to do different things? That could be a power that FES has with her voice or something. The other thing I'd ask Mizumi-kun to do was report anything particular that stood out about the band members. I knew they would all come out on stage once the concert started, so all I'd wanted him to do was a quick scan, then head back to me right after. And yet, despite my very specific instructions, he hadn't come back for a full five minutes after the show started. This was probably because he'd listened to the entirety of the first song. And dude, the singer? Fine-ass woman right there. Yeah, I have to imagine that he memorized every detail of her, so uh, we should be able to uh, achieve our objective about a description of her rather easily. You got some good taste, my man. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I'm trying to give this guy a surfer jock voice. I sighed internally, thinking with the wrong head like usual. Why was I even surprised? So much for I'm no sheep. Uh, what, what does she look like? Oh, right, the report. I dig this, by the way. Uh, kind of feels like I'm a detective or some shit, you know? Mizumi-kun grinned to himself, and I pressed him again to tell me about F.E.S.'s appearance. Well, for starters, she has short hair. Well, that rules out our theory. Uh, what? Short hair? And just like that, there was already a huge discrepancy. Did that mean F.E.S. wasn't the demon girl? No, wait, I couldn't let myself jump to conclusions here. She could have cut her hair, she could have used hair extensions, or she could have changed it in some other way. It wouldn't surprise me if she'd been in disguise when I'd seen her at the crime scene. She has the hottest bod, real hourglass type shit. And she was tall, too. Might even be the same height as me. She's tall. And the same height as you? Mizumi-kun and I were about the same height, which means FES was probably around 170 centimeters tall. Pretty tall for a girl. But I hadn't gotten that impression at all when I'd encountered the demon girl. My memories from back then were hazy, 
but I still felt like the demon girl had been shorter than me. Yet another thing that didn't line up then. Uh, anything else? Uh, oh yeah, she had this real aloof vibe to her. Too cool for school type thing. The way she spoke had a big part in that. She's the kind of girl to talk in whispers. As for the tits, she doesn't have much going on. But that gothic outfit more than made up for it. It was crazy how hot it was. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Oh, God damn it! Every single word he said was completely fucking useless. What did you expect? Look at who you sent in to do this. This is your fault. Then again, I'd only gotten a quick look at the demon girl, so I couldn't exactly list her features. This plan was probably doomed from the start. Just go in yourself. But anyway, since you're so interested in FES, you really ought to take a look for yourself. Let's hit it! <laughs> Just drag him in. Mizumi-kun began to push me from behind, forcing me up the stairs to Gigantus. I desperately tried to fight back, but Mizumi-kun was stronger than me. I couldn't get away. Whoa, wait! You want to see Fez's face, right? Come on, be honest. Fool around with another chick's a big part of a man's life. Taku, my boy, you're finally becoming a man. He doesn't even have the first chick. Just pretend the glasses girl you went home with the other day doesn't exist. I'll be forgetting about Tanaka tonight myself. What the hell was he talking about? I try to stand my ground and fight back, but to my horror I realized that I was already at the top of the stairs. While it was only the second floor, if I were to slip and fall it would hurt like hell. Just the thought made me stop resisting as hard. And in that moment of weakness, my entire body weight was sent crashing through the door and into the venue. Well, again, this will get solved real quick. The hell was that? The second I hit the inside, an explosion of sound blasted my eardrums. I'd never experienced something so loud before. Even the pit of my stomach was being forcibly shaken by the vibrations. It was so intense it felt as if my entire body was being crushed to pieces. There were no seats in the venue. Everyone was standing up to watch. They were all rocking their bodies in rhythm with each other, shouting, F.E.S. 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 as their fists shot up and down. Still nowhere near the level of a Watage performance, though. Hell, that is. The heat was devastating. It made me want to vomit. I might have been an otaku, but I was definitely not the type to obsess over idols or voice actors. Honestly, I hated this kind of atmosphere. I could tell I stuck out like a sore thumb, but thankfully nobody was paying any attention to me. There were so many people in front of me I could barely see the stage at the far end of the room, just the blinding stage lights and the faint figures of four people standing under them. And as I was getting overwhelmed by everything happening around me, Mizumi Kum handed me a plastic cup of soda. This better not be spiked. Seemed like Mizumi Kun had paid for my ticket too. I'd have to make sure to pay him back later. Okay, show us, show us her. Before I knew it, the song was over, the audience clapped and cheered. Then, having seemingly calmed down a little, everyone brought down their fists. Thanks to that, the road to the stage finally opened up, and I was able to see it clearly. I got a good look at the short-haired girl standing in the middle of the stage. She was definitely not the demon girl. Yep, her. Your tune is better than usual today. Yeah, she looks uh, much more gothy than she did the first time we saw her. The first time we saw her was just in a CG. This is her sprite. So, interesting. I can hear your voices clearly. Again, powers? Powers? The world is very translucent. The voice coming through the amp sounded nothing like the demon girl that had said those cryptic words to me. Mizumi-kun was right. F.E.S. definitely had an aloof vibe to her. Despite her short hair, she didn't feel boyish. She gave off this mysterious aura with a mix of charm, allure, and a hint of distance. And to top it all off, the silver accessories she was wearing all glittered fantastically as they reflected the lights. It felt like I was starting to understand why there were so many threads about her on that channel. In this kind of concert, I'd always thought that the band members would be more energetic, but F.E.S. seemed incredibly indifferent during the intermission. She was pretty much the exact opposite of the excited audience. Maybe that was just the type of person she was. But it seemed like the audience wasn't surprised by that. They just stayed silent during the break, listening closely to F.E.S.'s words. 
Perhaps it is that the gate to Cocutus has been closed. I'm sorry, what? Cocutus? What language was he even speaking? Yeah. I heard her say it and I don't even know what it was. The world's equilibrium has been maintained for millennia since the birth of the greater will. However, now it is crumbling. It is so very unstable. Are you talking a bunch of bullshit or is this uh, going to be relevant in some way? And thus I shall sing. I shall accept your chaos. Oh, I guess they were a goth punk band, so the band members probably had characters that they played. Maybe it was an easy way to win over the hearts of fans, just spelled some random nonsense that hinted that it might mean something, giving it enough mystique to keep people engrossed. Speaking of mystique, FES was holding something strange in her hand. In her left hand was a plain old mic, but in the other she was holding some sort of weirdly shaped mic stand. It looked kind of like a sword. It was shaped so elegantly it felt sinister. It looked so sharp that if you even so much as grazed it, it would slice your finger into. It was tall, too. As tall as F.E.S., in fact. Are we going to see our first magical weapon? There are also lines of glass embedded into it, which glowed with an ominous blue light. I couldn't tell if it was really a sword or not, but either way, it wasn't half bad as a character accessory. No complaints there. Let me see it. I was strangely captivated by it. Show me, show me. Then, using only her right arm... F.E.S. casually lifted the huge mic stand. And with an underhand grip, she swung it sideways. The blue light from the glass drew a wide arc with its afterglow. What the hell? That was dangerous. What if it hit someone in the crowd? That wasn't a mic stand. Could it be a sword? And every night she would use it to cut the throat of some poor audience member, harvesting blood to offer to the demon girl or something. Okay, okay, dial it back. Dial it back. You were doing so well. So was this concert actually some sort of black mass organized by a bunch of witches? A fierce chill ran down my spine just thinking about it. Goof goosebumps covered my entire body. I should really get out of here ASAP, but the moment I thought that, FES let out a gentle whisper. Yes? Up next, our third song of the night is Crucifixion or something else. Then, okay, never mind. <laughs> the necklace of the, blah, 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 blah. the next necklace of Vajrayana. Vajrayana. The crowd let out a huge cry of joy upon hearing that. The necklace of Vajrayana. Is someone going to get their throat slit or something? Is that going to be the fourth event? Are we going to witness it on our way home? I want to see the sword. Oh, there's the sword. Yeah, that's a sword. That ain't no mic stand, my guy. That's uh, questionable. A moment later, the members of Phantasm all started playing and a second flood of sound poured onto my ears. A thunderous roar came from the speakers, a roar that felt like it was going to blow up my eardrums. How have these people not gone deaf yet hanging out in places like this all the time? Looking to my side, I noticed Mizumi-kun was fully into it, pumping his, sink, his fist in sync with the rest of the audience. The intro ended, F.E.S. began to sing, and when I heard the lyrics, I swallowed hard. They're in Japanese, I don't know what they are. Let's all rock out, everyone. <laughs> Somewhere in the crowd, Japanese Columbo was looking around. It's like, excuse me, have you seen this man? Okay, music just cut out, and now I'm going to get the lyrics. She was singing the prophetic song that had been posted all over ch at channels. Is it the ones we know the lyrics of? It was a dark piece that didn't feel the slightest bit optimistic. Even its melody felt like a religious psalm, and the lyrics definitely didn't help. I don't know, it seems pretty upbeat. I could look this up on YouTube. Everyone was getting riled up at first, but as the song went on, the excitement dropped further and further. By the end, everyone just stood there, not saying a word. But that was because everyone was fully lost in the sound. Some of them just stared at F.E.S., completely entranced. There was definitely something about F.E.S.'s singing voice that captivated people. Again, is this some power? Even as I battled fear and nausea in the middle of the crowd, I found myself listening very closely to her song, not wanting to miss it. 
Okay, where's these lyrics, though? Goosebumps sprang up all over me. For a moment, it felt like the air itself had frozen over. You've got the album. Go home and check the lyrics. The song ended. <laughs> and we booked. FES was looking down at the stage, swaying her body from side to side as she soaked in the last echoes of the music. And then she suddenly looked back up, and without even gazing around for a second, she instantly looked at us. looked at me so this might be a delusion or it might not be a delusion who the hell knows i don't know i'm six episodes into this game and i don't know how to play it and it wasn't like she just glanced in the general direction of my eyes or like she would briefly made eye contact with me or anything like that fes was blatantly looking right at me i didn't even go so far as to say she was staring at me fixedly as if evaluating my existence, as if searching deep within my heart. Her gaze was all too intense, and yet somehow she seemed a little... sad. You're next. Before I knew it, I was rushing outside. Before I had a chance to apply an Instagram filter, I was out of there. See you later, Mizumi. I ran down the stairs outside Gigantus and crouched down on the bottom step. I tried my hardest to catch my breath and calm down, but to little avail. I really shouldn't have got in there. As for research purposes, we have learned some things. My heart was pounding. My entire body was drenched in sweat. Hey, what's going on, Taku? Why'd you run off? Can we get a confirmation from this guy that FES was looking at us? Because he should be able to verify that. Mizumi-kun had followed me. He sounded upset. Are you leaving already? The real party hasn't even started yet. God, you're so new at this. What a scrub. Well, anyway, what'd you think of FES? Pretty cute, right? Without looking up at him, I shook my head. Who cared about that? Sure, she was cute, but I wasn't into 3D girls. And more than anything, those lyrics. I hadn't caught everything, but from the little I'd heard, there was no way they hadn't been talking about the new gen cases. Of course, there was no definitive proof, but FES definitely knew something. I could feel it. I couldn't tell whether or not she worked for the demon girl, though. Whoa, that was a transition. The girl, now dyed a brilliant red, looks back from beneath a full moon. Well, I think we know what the uh, next event is going to be. The girl, now dyed a brilliant red, looks back from beneath a full moon. That was the lyric, I imagine. But I mean, she looks straight at me. Mizumi, you saw that, right? That hadn't been a delusion. And if it wasn't a misunderstanding on my part, either, there was no doubt about it. FES had looked at me. Just what were the emotions swelling in her eyes? What meaning did they hold? Why had her expression looked so painful? I didn't know. Maybe I'd find out if I asked her directly, but that would never happen. I couldn't set foot in that concert venue ever again, let alone speak with FES. Maybe we'll see her around. She was hanging around on that uh, bridge that one time. I'm never coming here again. Wiping the sweat off my forehead, I managed to squeeze out those words. If we just walk away from Izumi. We just don't give a shit. We're done. That's our evening. I'm going home and hanging out with Sarah. I logged straight onto ESO as soon as I got back from the Phantasm concert. The potato chips I had with me were already soggy, but I couldn't care less. They were still surprisingly tasty. Dude. Gross. Nasty. To me, ESO was my life. It was my happy place. A breath of fresh air that let me forget all about the real world. As long as I could immerse myself in ESO, I could forget all about my troubles. I could stop being me and instead wander base lard as Neidhart. But for today, for some reason, Neidhart was a little off. Yes, I knew that he relied entirely on my inputs and decisions, but somehow I found myself struggling to pull off things I could normally do with my eyes closed. The game was supposed to be a breath of fresh air, but today the more I played it, the more irritated I got. What the fuck, dude? You're messing up your rotations. Come on. I'm gonna fucking delete you, I swear to God. 20k DPS? Those are rookie numbers. I knew it was all my fault, but I still took my anger out on Nightheart. God damn it, I'm so fucking pissed. Listen to the album. Listen to the album. Listen to the lyrics. 
I guess the next victim is going to be a girl on a full moon. I yanked at my hair and kicked the bare steel wall. Having let out all my anger, I took a deep breath and sat back down in my chair. I stared vacantly at my monitor. Nightheart was just standing there, facing toward the gates of the city of Shangri-Lu, free of my control. <laughs> Watch him look back. Is he going to look back? Watch him look back at the screen. That's going to be fucking terrifying. His back was facing toward me, just as it always was when I fought enemies, and of course he was at the maximum level. I wonder what level I am. Had the human known as Nishiju Takami leveled up even slightly since he started playing ESO? No, since he'd been born? If I had, then why was I still so bad at talking to people, even though I was nearly an adult? Why was I a borderline shut-in? Borderline my ass. If I didn't log in as Nightheart for weeks, would he also turn into a shut-in like me? That would be funny. You log off from an MMO for a while, you come back six months later, your character's all fat, eating potato chips on the couch. Whose eyes are those eyes? I suddenly remember those words as I stared at Nightheart's back. I was mildly interested in what Nightheart would do if I wasn't controlling him. So I figured I'm going to observe him for a bit. I left my keyboard alone as I ate some chips. Oh god, this is not going to go well. If Nightheart had his own ego, then surely he'd waltz right into the city of Shangri-Lu, wind blowing against his shoulders, right? He was the hero everyone worshipped, after all. He's going to have an idle animation, he's going to look back. Man, delusions for days today. Hey, Nightheart. I'm always looking at you. You know. You aware of that? Fuck, fuck, fuck. What's gonna happen? And then... Without me even touching the keyboard, Nightheart who had been standing with his back to me, suddenly turned toward me. Or so it felt, lol, lol, lol. <laughs> gotcha, chat. Gotcha, guys. Gotcha, viewers. Lol. Like that had ever happened. Fuhihihi, <laughs> sucker. In the end, I'd stared vacantly at the monitor for over an hour, but Nightheart stayed completely still the entire time. Shouldn't this game have some idle animations? Come on. Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened next time, because we are now over the one hour mark. So, uh, all right, we're uh, making some connections. We're learning some things. We've met FES, or at least found out more about her. Might have found out more about that uh, other girl, too, since she might have been related to one of the victims. We've met Japanese Columbo, which automatically makes this my favorite episode. And, uh, well... We might be uh, dealing with a new character now, so we will see where the mystery goes. We will see if the police start getting on uh, Takumi's case because they have got him on camera. And we will find out what happens next time. Thank you guys for watching and sticking with the series. And uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one. Take care. Have a great week. I know you will. Make sure to subscribe, click all the things, whatever. You know how you do. Have a good one. Bye-bye.